This is amazing. Je ziet de maan links en de aarde rechts. Maar je ziet onze antenne in beeld. En dat vind ik zelf het coolste, want dat is het materiaal wat we aangeraakt hebben, wat ik er zelf op heb geschroefd bijna. En ja, gezien die positie denk ik dat als onze antenne uitgerold is, dat je dus vanaf hier misschien dan de maan niet meer ziet. Maar goed, daar hebben we al genoeg naar gekeken dan, toch? Dan zijn wij aan de beurt. We have a complete copy of the hardware that now is flying uh, with the satellite behind the moon. Before sending any commands to the instrument, we would like to check everything here in the lab to make sure that the commands that we will send to the instrument exactly follows what we are asking it. We assume that this is the satellite and this is our instrument and then they can talk to each other. If I, for example, here type greet, the instrument says hello to me. So I'm completely sure that it's responding to my greeting message. The first important command to send to our instrument is to deploy our antenna. So we have three antennas there, then we have to deploy uh, these three antennas all the way to five meter long, each of them. I won't do the whole five meter, but I can do this and I can keep on doing this for five meters long. It's now over a very long distance, I hear a crack. <laughs> the reason why we put these antennas behind the moon is because the radio waves that we want to collect, we cannot collect them on Earth. And that's basically because the atmosphere blocks those radio waves. The thing that we're after, and, uh, and for which this instrument is really, let's say, the prototype and the first step in that direction, is the very weak signals from the early universe, before the first stars were born. It's really very faint, very weak, so we have to have an ideal location, so far away from Earth, so as low noise as possible, and then listen very carefully to the early universe.